So how important is networking in comics? Does it matter? Yeah, it actually matters a lot, no matter who you are, no matter what part of comics you're in. So let's get into that. Hey, this is Perch, and I've got a deeper voice today, so, you know, that's going on. Uh, anyway, so how important is networking in comics, and is networking a bad thing? Uh, it, we often talk about it as kind of a political, more of a gross angle that people take. You know, they, they have their network, and they abuse their network, or they use their network to leverage kind of power and control. But networking is not always just a negative thing. It, it has a lot of different meanings. And the reality is, in, in pretty much any profession, the who you know and your network is critical to your job. It's critical to how you want to advance or be able to move around from company to company or, or just make things happen. And in comics, network is, is probably you know, of, of really high importance because so much of your job is tenuous. And when I say tenuous, I mean you know, you're not given a long-term contract. It's, it's not like as a creator, you get kind of this employment agreement and you just get paid every month and then, you know, you crank out some comics and, you know, if, you're, if your contract's going to get terminated, that means they're going to have to fire you and go through that whole process. It's not like that. It's, it's more of a, you know, you're getting a contract for a few books and then you have to kind of fight to earn that next contract. And so it's not, it's not a simple matter of just, you know, a regular employment style arrangement. There's, there's a lot more to it. So with that in mind, um, networking becomes pretty important because you want to be top of minds of editors or creators or people who you want to do projects with. Maybe you're an artist. You want to have a good writer network so that when writers are picked to do projects, they're recommending you. They're bringing your name to the table. They're saying, I want to work with this person. Or maybe if uh, you know a lot of editors, then they start to build projects around you or they put things in place for you. So that level of, of network is, is really important. You, you want to be known. You want to be top of mind. Now, at some point, if you're a really strong creator, uh, you, you know, you're, you're going to be just top of mind of everybody without needing to put any effort in yourself. Well, sorry, let me rephrase that. You don't have to spend as much time networking because your work speaks for itself. But even there, um, that's, that's a pretty big hill to climb. And generally speaking, even if you're super, super talented and in demand, of which, you know, the people who are in that zone, probably you can count on, you know, two hands, maybe even one, um, you can fall from that zone relatively quickly. If I mean, if you get on the bad side of an editorial team or, you know, or higher in a comic book company, um, they'll just find ways to not give you work. And then if they're not giving you work, Suddenly, you're not top of mind for fans anymore, and then you're in less demand. It's raining like crazy outside, by the way. I don't know if you can hear any of this. That would be a really annoying video if you can't. Sorry about that. Um, anyway, uh, so that's, that's kind of why the network is just structurally, procedurally important for your career. If you don't have it, then you're going to struggle. And just that's the reality of things. Now, as a network, I mean, the network can also be abused. And I think in a lot of cases in many companies, not just comics, but everywhere, the network does get abused. You get people who, um, you know, basically use their network to kind of bully and keep other people out and kind of gossip and tattle on other people. That's the dark side of a network uh, where certainly there's a lot of those shenanigans going on. And unfortunately, uh, there's not enough Let's see, how do I want to put this? Because there's not enough strength in the comic industry in terms of, you know, you don't have like a superstar who can kind of write their own ticket, who's either able to or, will. I mean, I would argue there may not be that individual anywhere. I mean, so take a look at Marvel for a moment. Is there any writer or artist that within two years could not be replaced? So, I mean, give you, give you an example. So Donny Cates, he did Venom. He's got a bunch of... Uh, he does Venom. He's got a bunch of very, very high-selling books. He does Thor. He's clearly a big name at Marvel right now. He brings them money. But if Donny Cates kind of started to say, hey, I'm not going to play politics. This stuff is wrong. Uh, I'm going to call out uh, Tom Brevoort as being a really you know, political person, and we need to change. This needs to change. If he started doing that, 
and he got on the bad side of editorial, you know, he'd, he could be gone in two years. Marvel would still be trucking along. It wouldn't be like his departure would kill off Marvel. Um, and there's, there's nobody. Unfortunately, there's nobody at Marvel, uh, on, certainly on the creative side. I mean, the, the only people you could kind of argue may fit into that camp are like, you know, Kevin Feige. At this point, if he left, that would be this, this vent in the corporation in Disney. But, you know, Joe Quesada, Tom Brevoort, I, they could go and Marvel would still be moving along. Now, you, you can argue and, and successfully that these guys hold a lot of information and they're valuable to the company. I'm not saying they're not valuable. Donny Cates is valuable to the company. All these people are. It's just that they don't have such leverage that they could demand change. You know, a good, a good way. So by counterpoint, uh, in Apple uh, computers, you know, the, the iPhone makers, if a Johnny Ive left the company or got angry and said, you know what, change needs to happen, he could demand some change. He's got leverage. He's enough of a, both a big name inside the industry and out. He's critical for their user experience. He can demand some changes as a, you know, as an executive. Um, further down, you know, you, you do have people in tech companies and medical and others who are researchers who get to be superstars in their field and they actually have leverage to the company they're working on, uh, working for. But in comics, you don't really have that same scenario. So unfortunately, because you don't have that same scenario, it does allow some bad behavior to exist. Uh, over in DC, you know, I, Tom King is still a big deal for them. Uh, Scott Snyder, uh, Bendis, uh, Didio, Lee. But um, just take away Didio and Lee for a second. You focus on those, those writers that I mentioned. If a Scott Snyder came out and said, you know what, uh, the, the politics that are going on with, uh, you know, with how projects are chosen and all the rest, uh, this is not tolerable. I'm not going to do it unless he was speaking out against uh, something that is, I guess, newsworthy. If it was if it's uh, some you know, racism or sexism or something like that, and Scott Snyder said enough, I think that that may drive some change. But even in the past, you know, you look at kind of the, uh, you know, some of the problems that DC uh, has had and Marvel with editors who are, you know, sexual harassers or other things. A lot of people did speak out and nothing changed within the industry. And, and in fact, even there's, you know, there's times where a writer or creator will say, I'm not going to work with this person for X, Y, and Z. And maybe they get their way. They don't work with that person. The person is not, not, not quickly drummed out of the industry. It, it's, when people get blacklisted, it's because there's a network of people who decide they don't want to work with people. It's not like, you know, a whistleblower kind of scenario where something is, is uh, you know, demands change. There's a big difference between saying, you know, a bunch of editors or writers getting together and say, I don't want to, you know, I don't, I don't like what John Malin does online, so I don't want him in, the, you know, in our comics, and then he doesn't get work. It's kind of the first scenario I was talking about earlier with the network. It's not like somebody says, uh, hey, the, you know, what John Malin does is bad for the industry. We need to make a big industry change. Nobody's doing that. You may, now, I'm not sure. I feel like I've lost the plot a little bit. I'm not sure I'm making my point clear, but um, it, it may sound like splitting hairs a little bit to you. But that's the, the value of a network is that you are well-liked, that people find you easy to work with, that you know people. And like I mentioned before, that you're top of mind. The value of a network is not to abuse and gatekeep and blacklist people. That's not what a, a, a network should be used for. Uh, but unfortunately, you know, both things are true. And, you know, I, a lot of people beat up on comics, and I think that's being a little short-sighted. This isn't a comics-only problem. This is a, this is a life problem. You go try and get a job at Microsoft, there are big portions of groups there that, you know, gatekeep and, and band together. And big corporations tend to have you know, HR departments and other places specifically to prevent that from getting out of control. But it still does and can. So it's it's an interesting it's an interesting field. It's an interesting world. Um, networking. If you're if you're entering into comics, and I guess this is you know the reason why I got onto this topic is really for this piece that I'll kind of cram in here in the end. You know, if you're trying to get into comics, you want to be a creator. It's important that you build your network. It's important that you be seen. But in my view, uh, the best way to do it is to just show you're a reasonable, reliable, on time. When people write to you, you write back, you deliver, 
you are friendly and courteous and you're somebody that people can work with. I think that's the best network for you as a creator, as an aspiring person who wants to get into comics. That's the best thing you can do for yourself. You can certainly take a road where, you know, you, you, you make friends and you buy drinks and you, you get on personal terms with some editors and you kind of join one of these cliques, if you will. Um, that's another way. I mean, I'm not going to deny that you can get work that way and it can be good for your career and everything else. I just think it's, you know, one, you're, if you're a good, talented person, you're selling yourself short by taking that route. And it's, it's, it's kind of a cheap win. And now, many people say a win is a win. But to me, that's a, that's a cheap win because you're, you're building your career more on who you know rather than your talent and your, your ability to work with people. And that's the network I think you want. That's the network that I think is, is valuable. And that's, that's where you want to go. Anyway, those are my thoughts on the whole matter. What do you think? Uh, how is networking work for you? Are there parallels between your career, your job, your field, and, uh, and comics? Does any of it sound nice and familiar? Um, would love to know your thoughts. Uh, leave a comment below. Like, subscribe. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Comic Perch. And thanks for listening. 